Mann, der hat Zeit bei ihm, schaut auch weit. So, this is a nine week old puppy of Bitusha breeding. And first time really on a sleeve, but it's just so you can see how when the genetics are right and the breeding is nice, come with me, then you have a this kind of solid bite, you can see it tells up, confident and very solid and comfortable. So we carry a little bit. Yeah, talking about that one. that age many will do a lot more we don't necessarily need to do that we trust the breeding and the genetics um, we just allow the puppy to enjoy that grip without going into a fight mode little thing here, it's just kind of like a heartbeat on the sleeve and encourages the body. What I'm doing here, it's also very lightly pretending that I'm trying to take her out, which makes her counter and bite too. Again, we try to pretend that we are pushing her away, and then we reward with some movement. Any kind of monotonous, mon, 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 uh, repetitive movements. Help you open the door. 
And you get the other one. So that's really the amount of work that we would be doing when we are trying to test. It's a semi-testing situation as well as foundation training, of course. Um, so now we're gonna bring another one. They are leader mates. And basically, there will be some of the puppies that are gonna do well for sports, some of the puppies that's gonna do well for protection. The ones that do well for protection, they are really, um, they have to buy, they have a lot of similarities, but the protection dogs, they just have to be a little bit more comfortable. Um, so, when I mean comfortable, it's a little easier, not so high sporty drive, but those that can relax can be very easy in the house. And also being able to flip up and going to drive when they need it. But otherwise very, very easy, friendly, playful dogs at home. Um, <clears throat> now, we have another boy, and he's never really done any of this yet, so this is why it's important to see. So what I'm doing is I'm making some movement, quick movement, as you can see, creates that desire to chase and catch, and then we're going to present. The moment we present, we're trying to go away, but enough to where he can be successful. Nice. So you can see this one is just a little more excitable than the first one. You can hear him. Nothing wrong about it, Kerry. Easy with him. The noise. It's not insecurity, it's just excitement and not knowing what to do and how, but wanting to do. So now, as he's losing the grip, I'm keeping him away, shocking that it's gonna go away, and it does. That little tension, not to strangle him, but a little tension works for two good reasons. One is he understands that it's gonna go away, so he's like, oh, I gotta keep it. But it's also giving him some support. See, now he's diving in. And carry. interesting. Trainers will try to make this regripping all the time, but if you ask the dog to regrip all the time, then you're also teaching them not just to be full, but that they can keep chomping. So sometimes it's perfectly okay if it's not always 
in and out, by, 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 adjust, adjust, adjust. He will adjust when he feels strong, because you, when you know the genetics and you trust the breeding, you know that the grip is there. Same thing if you try to do play and you throw a ball and they don't play with a ball, you know that they will because genetically they are good for doing it. So now I'm gonna make them re grip and the way we will do it is we're gonna try to pretend that we're taking it away and at the same time give them an opportunity. There he goes. There he goes. And stay. also don't really do that every day. I'm definitely not gonna do that twice or three times a day. We don't want to overload. We don't want to satiate. We want this to be something of interest. They have plenty of months and years to be doing it. We're just waking up the drives, encouraging the right behaviors. And that's all we need to want. All I'm doing is, as I said, making him love it and get the right behavior. Yes, come on. Come. 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 Now, as I said, not all of them will do green sport or personal protection, but it's a very good way to work because when it's on the leg sleeve, it's on all four legs. And it feels comfortable. Oh, oh, monster fighter. Oh, monster fighter. Oh, oh. Come on. Now I'm gonna stay over oh. there and we're gonna make him out and make him go over. little accomplishments, Thanks, Baba. Come on. a little bit of problem, but easy one so it can be solved easy and we show how to win. When they know how to win and the situation is difficult, then they put more effort in what they believe is going to win instead of trying other things. Now you can see with this guy how he started and as I said it was his very first time on the leg sleeve and now the joy comes. Now he knows that he actually can take care of stuff. And we're going to do another out here and we're going to let him charge again. Look at that effort. Look at that effort. <laughs> 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 oh, See now that little noise. Now we're gonna calm it down and let it enjoy the wind. So I'm gonna show you one more and we're gonna stop the light. Make sure that you hit like and subscribe. You know the deal. I'm planning to do quite a few lives to teach you and show you what we do. That it's anything from that early stage to the older dogs and some very tactical 
protection training. Feel free to make comments. We do check them, we do respond to them. Also, any suggestions that you may have that you want to talk about, hold them by, the, by right there, in there. And let them go. So yeah, that's really how protection looks. We, as I said, I'm, I show very little. Just okay, go under, get a bite. Go over, get a bite. Get a little noise, get a bite. But it's not what you typically will see when a trainer has a nice young puppy and overwhelmed with a lot of rattling and a lot of pressure to show him that there is no stress. But actually the stress is accumulating. Um, I'm gonna give you one other tip here. Very, very cool one. So, there is few ways that you can do things. One is show the puppy that the stick is, it works as a press, it works as a, a reassurance. So yeah, yeah, good boy, keep going. But then, I cannot really use it in the way I like to use it. And the way I like to use anything is to say, hey, this is dangerous, but you can overcome it. But I don't want to convince you that, hey, it's not dangerous, it's actually encouraging. No, it's dangerous, watch out, get a little worried, but I'll show you the way how to win. So that's kind of, you know, a side note, a tip. Now, Another one, Move, movement, movement, oh, 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 So you see the biting, but you don't see the pressure. The pressure is actually pretty strong with this one. You can see the tail, it's immediately from the bite, all of them when they bite, again, that genetics kicks in. So the full bite brings automatic satisfaction. You don't need to teach gripping behaviors. They are either there or not there. This is why, when you breed, and we breed Malinois since 89. Um, these dogs, just so you know how crazy we are doing this. Their mom lives in Bulgaria. She's a daughter from my competition dogs here. So it goes down to my two-time world champion, Kenny who goes back to very old school Belgian lines. From Bulgaria, my friends took the female to Belgium to breed to a very special dog that creates this for us. And then we flew her to Florida. Look at this. Like in a trance-like state. Yeah. Now I can overstress it and put a lot of pressure or I can let her enjoy. And at that age, it's far more important to take your time and let the puppy be super confident and enjoy what it's doing. Um, so she whelped here and then we ended up 
sending her back home like what was it two weeks ago something yeah. like that yeah and from there on me and Taylor do most of the stuff with them they come every day here we put all sorts of different things for them to play but as I said the protection stuff is very little at that age that's all I need to be seeing and we are by no means surprised that they do that and again when you understand the, how the genetics work and you rely on the breedings and the lines of the dogs this is the result so um let's see if we can carry some nice So all this a little bit, it's again kind of like a, if you think of a predator grabbing his prey and now he has a hold and he's choking it and he's waiting to die. And sometimes that little pop on the line, is kind of like a heartbeat that tells the puppy, oh, the sleeve is still alive, I should not let go. Because what happens in nature, right? When the predator bites, like you've seen a lion holding a gazelle and she's dead, and next thing you know, she's gone. Because the lion was pulled and loosened up the grip. So this is all we are doing. The hay is gonna try to escape. And everything at this point, what we do is teaching the puppies, hey, this is gonna trick you and at some time, we'll try to escape. Feels good, doesn't it, Mom? Oh, yeah. All right. We're gonna go for some wild stuff. A little bit over the obstacles, maintaining the grip. So when this happens, we finally made the puppy very lazy and now the gazelle ran away. So we're not gonna go right away in the puppy's face, we make it challenging. that little stimulation got her and now we balance it out and she goes nice come on come on come on baby much how 
those little training sessions go. They're gonna keep moving forward. So what you just saw, the next time we train, it's gonna go to a very different level. And the next time we train, it's gonna go to a very different level. But the puppies are the ones that dictate how far and where we wanna go. It's not me as a decoy, right? Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Again, make sure you like, subscribe, write me what you want to, what you want me to talk about, what you want me to teach you. And if you have any other comments, we will respond. Take care.